Cheers, cheers, good and classes for Eiffel TV in association with MTK Global. Back again. Back once again with a renegade. No. Um, why are you back here anyway? We only did something last Friday. Was it Friday? Friday. Why do you like. I don't know. Just... You're so annoying because your number will come up, right? It's be like nine o'clock at night. I'll be like. Sometimes you got some juicy gossip. Oh, hang on, hang on, sorry. What are you doing? Oh, mate, mate, I've got permission for this. Ed, well, I've got permission. You don't even put it up right, mate. What's but it's all hanging here, there is, put it in the middle of the middle of your chair. What's happening there? Oh, mate. Oh, bollocks. Is it wonky? It's alright. Is that alright? That'll do. It's all right. Sorry guys. What I'll do as well is I'll go over like this, so you got to follow me around during the thing so we get all the logo and not. How are you anyway? <coughs> I'm pretty good really, yeah. Um, all systems go? Yeah, it was good. It was nice last week. Just, I think when you've been working on something for so long, you just want to get it out there. Um, the response has been incredible. So thank you for that. Thank you for that. Um, great fight cards. Yeah, I'm just, the only issue is it's raining at the moment and it was rather windy yesterday. So we're going to have a lot of drama in fight camp. You know, we're going to have, you know, you may get someone test positive. You may get someone pull out, you may have a bit of rain, you may have some wind, you know, but that's what we want. Test positive for coronavirus, you mean? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Or, or performance enhancing drugs. Who knows? Well, let's hope not. Well, let's bloody hope not. Let's bloody hope not for te positive tests in both scenarios, Coogan. Absolutely, it would. Um, let's crack straight to it. Um, yeah, news broke two days ago that reportedly Jarrell Miller. Oh, you wanted to come in and talk about Jarrell Miller? Well, yeah, because that was... That Can I ask you, like, when that news broke, um, did you immediately think, I need to do an interview with Eddie? No. Okay, go on then. Yeah, what's your question? Because it was like two days ago, it's like, I would have been at your doorstep. I wouldn't have let you come yesterday, anyway, I was busy, but anyway, go on. But I didn't ask, that's the whole yeah. point. Mm. So, no. But yeah, your, your reaction <clears throat> to this, I know you've already done some interviews on this, but... Just... Um, like everyone's reaction really you just can't believe it people for a long time have been saying that Jarrell Miller's been doing this throughout his career we don't know that we can't prove that we know I think I think I believe he's also failed a test previously but having watched an interview yesterday I don't know if it was very well documented or that was the first time I've sort of seen a lot of discussion about that and I guess I watched your interview or Raza's interview with Serafina yesterday and I think she hit the nail on the head and it's exactly what I said when it happened. He can't fight without her. He doesn't have the confidence or the belief to fight without her. That's my honest opinion. And I don't think, because I like Jarrell Miller, do you know what I mean? And I know a lot of people who have stuck by him, have supported him, have given him the benefit of the doubt, because he's a very engaging character, you know, good guy to be around, but I just think he has a problem, and I don't think he can fight without Peds. Um, what did you make of his interview he gave to, I think it was the... It was bizarre, yeah, who was he? It was a good interview, it was very a lot, lot better than you. There's no need for that. No, but he was a lot, I'm, I wasn't a dick. I'm just saying that you yeah, are, it you was know, a dick. well look, you are probably the biggest platform out there in terms of the smaller platforms. Um, you didn't, did that? Did I that did, I'm waiting for yeah, it to finish. Okay, but what I'm saying is, you're supposed to be the best, right? No. What? Being the biggest and the best is truly the Okay, biggest. well, it's the same thing, mate. No. Yes, it is. No, it right, anyway. Well, you're not the best, because this geezer is a lot better than you anyway. So who is this geezer? 
Can we find out who he was? I think his name is Jeremy, I think. Shout, shout out to Ron Jeremy. No, not Ron Jeremy. Oh, right. Just so, Jeremy. Okay. Shout out to Jeremy, who did the uh, Jarrell Miller interview. I thought you were really bloody good. Um, really bloody good. I think you were a lot better than Coogan Gap. I mean, no. It's not I'll even... I'll take it. I'll take no, it. No, but I don't... It's, this is not... I'm not having a dick. You are having a dick. But there's levels, yeah? And his levels were on an, in another stratosphere to yours. Do you think you're going to slag me off on my own channel? Do you think this is the way this works? With your wonky fight posts at the OJ. <laughs> Can you just show me how that looks, please? No. Well, I don't want it to look Mickey Mouse. No, no, it's fine. It's just... It, it, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, Fight Net was... Fight Net? I've never even heard of him. Fight but Net. listen, I thought he was really good. And he was good. But what, good. How, why is Jarrell Millen? Why do you think he did an interview with him? I have not Strange choice. choice. Anyway. Well, what did you make of the comments within that? I think he's lying. I think he's stone cold lying. I mean... You know, my legal team looking into it and they're, oh, yeah, these, these substances. I mean, I think he was kind of alluding to the fact that he'd alerted his lawyers that he was taking this substance. And when you write an exemption form down, see, there's a lot of people who might write an exemption form down. I've had it with fighters, I won't say the card, but it was in a card in America, where someone will put down a supplement that the commission won't be happy with and they have to get confirmation from the doctor they need to take that supplement. But I don't know the ins and outs of GWH15 or whatever it is. And is there a reason why that might be in your system if you're taking, uh, you know, a supplement for, God knows, for, a, for an illness or whatever? So, but I, don't, I just don't believe him. And, and this is the same problem. We had, when was our interview, last interview about Jarrell Miller? A couple of weeks ago. And I said to you, he's never said, hands up. I cheated. Like, let's have it right. He couldn't bring it for all the talk and all the head to head and the pushing and shoving. He couldn't bring himself to fight Anthony Joshua without taking pets to try and beat him. Fact. Right? The worrying thing is that after all that, he couldn't bring himself to fight Jerry Forrest without taking pets. So I think you have to say that on a clean level, this ain't for you. Do you know what I mean? So, but he was due to make good money. He had a signing on bonus from top rank and Jay Prince, I believe, which he's probably going to have to, but he owes me money. We were getting paid for this fight from the money he owes us from the Joshua fight. The upfront payment that we gave him, which he has to return, because he failed a drugs test. I didn't know that part. Yeah, well, no one does. Well, it's another IFL exclusive. So we'll probably we'll probably sing for that and all. A lot of people are suggesting that Gerald Miller shouldn't be able to fight again. Maybe he should never have been allowed to fight after the AJ thing. But certainly now, I mean, you can't possibly say that this guy, you know, should be allowed to fight again. I mean, <clears throat> top rank, you know, it's difficult because everyone will say, well, you got Povetkin on, you know. I, I really do find a massive difference between some doping offences and others. All should constitute a ban, by the way. But when you test positive for three different substances in three different uh, tests, like, there has to be a difference between that and some other, you know, a test between a, a trace of something that, you know, could have been a mistake, could have been or could have been cheating. And I just felt that the thing with Jarrell Miller, and Jarrell Miller was lucky really, because he didn't have a license at the time, okay? So he was applying for his license with the New York State Athletic Commission. If he would have actually applied, you know, if this would have been two weeks later, he would have been banned for a period with the New York State Athletic Commission. As such, when Top Rank signed him, he wasn't banned. When Bob Bennett at the Nevada Athletic Commission licensed him, you know, right or wrong, he wasn't banned. So they were within their, you know, within their rights to do so. The issue now is, is he was licensed with the Nevada State Athletic Commission. So what ban, and Bob Bennett will come crushing down on Jarrell Miller, what ban will the Nevada Athletic Commission give Jarrell Miller? We all know that that uh, ban will probably be administered 
in every state, probably not at all states, and different people will look at different circumstances differently. Um, and I don't think he'll be allowed to fight again. But you know like when, it's a bit like, you know when you commit a crime or someone commits a crime and they're going, I never did it, I never did it, you know, I never, blah, 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 you know, and then all of a sudden comes out two weeks later they've confessed, you know? This, this is, he would be, he would be better off going Queen's evidence, you know, and just saying, sorry. But how can you say, so? like, you, you, when you, when you don't say sorry for the Joshua one, you ain't going to say sorry now, are you? Because you're just admitting to the fact that you've cheated. When you're talking about, or referencing that there's certain legal implications to why he couldn't disclose all the information. Yeah, that'll what, be. What do you expect that to be? Well, I think that's probably, you know, that they will probably launch a league. I mean, he would, the thing is with people like Jarrell Miller, and then, this is very interesting from the Serafina article, and this isn't relatable to boxing or, or relationships with fighters. This is just about sport and life. When you back someone, when you believe in them, I remember when Dwayne Chambers failed a drugs test years ago, right? And, he was represented by a company that I used to share an office with. Lovely geezer, right? Used to come in and I really believed he would go on and win Olympic gold. I thought, you know, he was from Essex as well, from Ilford, and I thought, proper, proper lovely geezer. Went out to train in America with Victor Conti, came back, competed, failed a drugs test. I was arguing with people blind that it was a mistake and there is no way Dwayne Chambers would would cheat in sport, right? When the truth came out, he was part of this system and he made a mistake and that's what happened, he did. And with Jarrell Miller, everyone will back him to say he never. And when you're close to someone and they look you in the eye and they tell you, I swear I never took it, and you know he would say that to people, right? So whether it's Aaron, whether it's Jay Prince, whoever it is, you know Jarrell Miller was, this is unbelievable. You've got to look into this. We've got to get the lawyers on this. This is bullshit. This is what, when he first failed that first drugs test in the AJ fight, he came on to me, I think, messaged me and said, this is outrageous. I promise you, I swear to you, I've never taken anything and this is, oh, this is the truth is going to come out and blah, 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 blah. And I thought to myself, I half believe, I actually, I, you know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't cheat, would you? Like, we've got VADA testing, right, from 12 weeks out. You're gonna make four million bucks. You're gonna fight for the world heavyweight title at Madison Square Garden. You wouldn't be so stupid, would you, to take PEDS when you are in a 12 or 14 week VADA? Like, so maybe it was a mistake, or maybe, you know, it was a contamination, whatever. So I'm sort of half thinking to myself, obviously we're fucked here and the fight's not happening, but maybe, like, maybe I don't know, he's, he had a nutritionist or they made a mistake or whatever. Two days later, another call from Margaret Goodman. Oh, uh, now we've found this, testosterone, and this is injected. And I'm like, fucking hell, what's your excuse for that one? You know? So, but you, when you're close to someone and you believe in them, you'll always have their back, you know? It's only when the truth comes out, you hope that they were telling you the truth. And I liken that to Dillian White, you know, when he had his issue with Oscar Rivas. Do you know how much stick I took for that? You know, right? I was the one that had to come out when there was a full investigation going on. No one could really say anything. I was the one who had to stand in front of the cameras, speak to all the media, listen to all the shit online, back Dillian White to the hills, because I believed in him and I believed he was telling the truth. And thank the Lord, he was. And when the investigation was done with you, Ked, the truth came out. But with Jarrell Miller, we got the part of, I promise you I'm telling the truth, but unfortunately when we got past that, we found out you definitely weren't. So this time around, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna believe him? You know, was he really unlucky? This, seriously, it's the same substance that he took last time, you know? But the answer is, we go back to the fact that he cannot fight without taking pets. Whether it's a confidence issue, whether it's a psychological defect, 
whether it's just that he wants to get an edge, I don't know. But that is the, that's the reality of the situation. So when you heard about this, what was your kind of initial thought? Was it like... I was like, I can't believe it. Well, I thought, firstly, where's my 50 bags? But, you know, I just thought to myself... That's the guy. Sorry, I've just found him. Shout out Jeremy Herridges. He's only got 500 followers. It's a good interview you've done there. Um, we name tricks him properly. Yeah. So, I just thought, I can't believe it, but I guess I'm not surprised. A lot of people in boxing who are in his circle weren't surprised. But you just think, wouldn't you? You wouldn't be so stupid, would you? So to be so stupid, because he's not a stupid guy, he's not thick, therefore it has to be an addiction. Okay, um, so Twitter was interesting as always a couple of months ago. Mm. Well, um, oh, you want to talk about Taylor Serrano tweets? Well, that's actually right. originally okay. what okay. it was. Oh, right. okay. Then, then the middle stuff, yeah. Things yeah. change. Um, Amanda Serrano, very vocal on mm. social media. Uh, obviously, Lou Bella, yourself. Mm -hmm. So can you just... Well, first, I think it's important to know people for people to know it's not Amanda Serrano tweeting. Right? She doesn't even, I, I believe further to conversations with people around her. She doesn't even actually use a phone, particularly. So it's- she's, I've heard her say this. Yes, she doesn't have a, she says she doesn't, she doesn't have a mobile phone, phone and she never ever used a phone. That's her manager tweeting, Jordan, uh, Jordan Maldonado, Jordan, yeah. So, um, but you know, Lou called, I had a conversation that day with Lou. So let me just tell you the situation. We made the deal to fight Katie Taylor. I actually had to give Amanda a warm-up fight in January in Miami, which I really didn't want to do. Didn't have space on a card. Spent all my money for the show. But put her on, paid her, and paid her in advance to fight Katie Taylor after that, okay? The fight was scheduled for May the 2nd. Manchester. I mean, it seems that apparently the pandemic was totally my fault, according to their team, and they can't believe I changed that date. But anyway, then we went back and said, look, as you know, because we said it about the announcement, we're gonna try and do that fight in July. Okay, kept kept in touch, obviously that's not the case. July was impossible. So I went back to Lou Bella. this is prior to securing the August 22nd date, and said, look, trying to find the date, it's out of interest. Would Amanda Serrano take less money for this fight? We have no crowds. We have nothing at all. He said, I can ask, but I can tell you now, the answer is no. And I was like, look, look, you know, just have a conversation. Katie Taylor's taking less money for the fight, so I'm asking you the same question. Eventually came back, no. All right, nine weeks out, or whatever it was, I emailed Lou Bella and said, just to let you know, further to our conversations, we'll pay, you know, as per the contract, we pay Amanda Serrano full purse, and um, August 22nd is the date just so people are clear, clear on a few facts as well. Amanda Serrano signed the contract to fight Katie Taylor. Lou DiBella signed the contract to fight Katie Taylor. For what day? It, is it, I don't know, can I answer that? There is a clear force majeure clause where we have the right to reschedule the fight in the event of a delay due to an incident of this nature. So it's, what's the whole reason any big fight if you want the ability to reschedule a fight, this is a very basic clause, all right? It's not something that's slipped in. And they knew exactly the case, okay? So we exercised our right to reschedule the date, and the new date was August 22nd. Can I just stop you on mm -hmm. Wasn't the rescheduled date this Saturday, the 4th of July? It, it, no, the re it doesn't matter when, it's not like you have one chance to reschedule and it doesn't right. go from there. What, what the case is, is that's the date that we proposed it was clear to everyone after a few weeks after that, that July obviously wasn't happened. She knew that. She was training nonstop. She was posting pictures in the gym in New York, hitting a bag or wherever she was. And in the meantime, uh, Telemundo, which is a TV company in, um, in Puerto Rico, offered her a gig and a celebrity contest, whatever it was, where they'd fly her to a private island on a private jet, she'd get paid, 
blah, 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 blah. And she thought, do you know what? Fuck training and going into a camp. Fuck having a war with Katie Taylor. I'm going to go on a private island on a private jet. So she committed to that show without obviously letting us know. I then found out about that and thought, cheeky little fuckers. And said to myself, well, firstly, Telemundo, you're interfering with my contract with, with uh, Amanda Serrano. So I spoke to Telemundo, I spelled it out to them, I explained the situation, and they said, okay, acknowledged, we're not gonna go ahead with Amanda Serrano. Of course you can't, she's under contract for the fight, okay? Then the shit hit the thing. You know, Serrano started going mad, Luda Bella said, oh, you know, what it is, we can't make that date because uh, she can't train in New York and she can't spar. So, well, she's been training nonstop. Yeah, but it's not fair because uh, Katie Taylor's training and, oh, guess what? Katie Taylor's in New York, in training camp. They're both in the same state, okay? So, basically, the, the truth of the story is she wanted to go on this show. And she didn't really want the legacy fight. So then, it's like, this was last week, it was eight weeks when we're having this argument. I said, it's eight weeks away. I mean, it's still more than seven weeks, right? You're fit, you've been training, we've seen it all over your social media. Take the fight. She's getting a fortune for the fight. She's got everything she wanted. And you know when the, you know, the person tweeting for her starts going, oh, I'm not being, you know, don't bully me into the fight. Drop me out. The truth is, I gave you a vacant gift of a world title at Madison Square Garden. I gave you the Heather Hardy fight. I gave you a warm-up fight that I didn't even want to give you. I gave you an advance on your money to fight Katie Taylor. Don't take the piss, right? And I know that Serrano don't call the shots. So this is one for Debella, and this is one for the trainer. And Lou Debella, although he has to back his fighter, he knows one million percent we're in the right here, right? His argument of, oh, all of a sudden, there might be a ban on travel to the EU. There is no ban to travel on the EU. She can't, she can't um, train in Europe. All right, well, Katie Taylor is. Yeah, but, okay, well, go, go into training camp. It's the undisputed lightweight child. You're making hundreds of hundreds of thousands of dollars to fight this fight. So, it, I have to be honest with you, it really pissed me off. Really pissed me off. And, and normally, I might just go, I can't be arsed with them. But it's like, no, you can't take, take the mick. You've signed up for this fight, Taylor's been training for it, you've got nine weeks from when we told you, you've still got eight weeks, and now you've still got seven weeks. Take the fight. And that was the situation. 100% the fight is off. Well, subject to... For the 22nd one. No, subject to them coming on this week and saying, you know, fair's fair, we take the fight. They've still got time, loads of time, they've been training. Look at her Instagram, you know what I mean? Backup options. I like the Delphine Pursun fight. You know, we've made um, three offers to Delphine Pursun. We're close. We're close. I mean, it's it's a much bigger fight because of the controversy that the first fight. Yeah, um, like fair play to Taylor. She hasn't got to take the fight. She no, I don't. Because people, some people believe. Do you know what I think? Katie, Kate, Katie wants to take that fight because there is doubt in some people's mind that she might not have won the fight, and I don't think she wants that doubt. So it's a fight like all these fights that deserve, you know, a sold out arena and a crowd and everything, but we don't live in that world anymore. And I think if you're a fighter, if you really care about legacy and achievements, you have to adapt in this environment and you have to, you have to go for it. You know, Katie don't want to wait. You know, she's been ordered, by the WBA, you know, she won the world title nearly three years ago. She hasn't faced a mandatory yet, mainly because she's been having unification after unification. Um, she's got to fight Miriam Gutierrez, who's 14 and 0, good fighter in herself, but I don't think that's what she wants. You know, she wants Pearson, she wants Serrano, she wants Brackhouse, she wants Cyborg, she, and that's, and, and then I'm not saying that she's done after that, but that's what motivates her. Katie Taylor is a legacy fighter, you know? And I think when you look at the world, the only thing I can guarantee Katie Taylor right now, if we can get Pursun over the line is, we can do it now. Can we do it in October, November? I really don't know. But I know we've got a slot to go in August, and I think she'll be up for it, so we shall see.
In regards to that 22nd of August day, what is the situation regarding Dave Allen and Hugh Fury, who I've both spoken to in the last four days about this fight? Honestly? Hmm. If we, if Katie Taylor ends up fighting a mandatory, Gutierrez, we need to strengthen the card, right? Because White, Povetkin, Taylor Serrano, or Taylor Pursun, banging, banging, plus undercard, which we know, you know, we've got a place ready. If Taylor fights her mandatory, we need another big fight. And we made both guys an offer for that fight. Um, Huey Fury accepted that offer. Dave wanted a little bit more, and he's well within his rights to ask for a little bit more. We're not a million miles away. Um, so a lot, a lot. I, I still think you'll see that fight. Whether you see it on the twenty second will be subject to who Katie Taylor fights. So basically, if Taylor fights Serrano, or Pursun, or Pursun, it's very unlikely. Correct. That Fury and yes, Allen's on that card. Okay. But if not, then you know, what do you think of that fight? I like that you know, fight. Not, I was not, I'm not bothered about you. What do you think of that fight? Do you like you? I mean, I think it's it's an intriguing fight. It's two British heavyweights. You know, Dave Allen's a bit hot and cold. I think Huey Fury has looked a lot more aggressive last time out. I think it's a good, solid British heavyweight fight. So, we shall see. <coughs> Sorry. Edward. Um, it's really blown up on Twitter again. Everything is it what's blown up now? over the weekend? What is that noise? It's my emails. Who was that email from? Can you just let us know? Bloody hell. What, mate? It was the guy who done that interview. He's asking for a job. No, not really. Um, All right, if you can't find it, Edward, it's all right. You just, all you're doing is reading the email now. Uh, it was from my daughter's school about her Lambda class. There you go. Okay. Thanks, Ed. That's right. Mm. Uh, Dylan White and Tyson Fury. Mm. I mean, it's not come out of nowhere, so to speak, but it has right got half personal between them over the last three or four days. Yeah, I think um, it's almost like we're building up between a fight between them two, which we're clearly not at the moment. It all stemmed from... Before Tyson had the Wilder fight contracted, he really called out Dillian White, right? And said, I won't fight you for the interim title, but if you get the fight for the diamond title, me and you, Dillian White, let's have it. So Dillian White got very excited. We contacted the WBC and we said, please, can you order that fight that Tyson Fury has personally requested? And then... Basically, when it came down to it, they said, actually, don't order that fight. This is Team Fury. So that never happened. Right now, Dillian White is mandatory to Tyson Fury. Okay? He is Tyson Fury's mandatory challenger. Now, when that gets called upon, Tyson Fury will have to fight him. But right now, he's already Tyson Fury's mandatory challenger. So he's hunting him down. He's calling him out. And you see, Ty I mean, Tyson Fury's actually blocked me on Twitter for about the last two years. It's really annoying. In fact, Tyson, if you're watching this, can you unblock me from Twitter? Because I, I sometimes want to go and, um, you know, sort of see what he's tweeting. He's not blocked me on Instagram. Um, so I couldn't actually see what he was tweeting. But I saw him going backwards and forwards with Dillian White, and I think it's great. I think it's great for Dillian. It's great for boxing. It keeps people excited. Keeps the banter going. I think it's great. Tyson Fury released a video a couple of days ago, you would have seen as well, mm. uh, from some suggestions from Team Wilder, including Deontay Wilder's brother, Marcellus, who put this uh, statement out saying that Deontay, Deontay, Deontay Wilder um, has got a dent in his head as a result of the fight. He's 
had an all topsy and these yeah. kind of comments. So Fury come back obviously with that Instagram video and said that um, all these foul play claims are bullshit, etc. What did you make of that little situation? So boring. What is Wilder doing? Like he's just digging himself into a bigger and bit. Mate, you got beat. I mean, the only thing is when you know Fury does that with his jab, and when you do that at speed, you know if you slow it down, I'm sure the glove will move a little bit. You know when they went like that and the glove moved. People, you know, I saw Tyson Fury's Instagram post, and he, he's he's spot on. You don't you got to understand, especially in America, you don't sit in the changing room, right? And the bloke comes in, inspects your wraps, inspects your gloves, and then he goes out the door, and you go, oi. Pull that down a bit and just put a little bit of uh, charcoal in there. Sweet. Oh, I've got it in. <laughs> Lovely. There is someone that sits with you. It's close as this. They will not leave your side the whole time in the change room. Right? The wraps have to get inspected. The gloves get inspected before they go on. The gloves go into the wraps. Then they get inspected again. Then they get sealed. Then they get signed off. J. Diaz will see the wraps. J. Diaz will see the gloves. Like... It's ridiculous, ridiculous. And it's really affecting, for me, Deontay Wilder's credibility. And I know his brother said that, so, you know, but I think he's just, I think he's just lost the plot. I, I don't, I don't, you know, and I know some people are on AJ's side and some people are on Fury's side and, you know, you got you, but let's just have one thing right. When AJ lost to Andy Ruiz, he did not make one excuse. I promise you, he could have given you 10 off the bat, right? Probably seven or eight of them, you'd have gone, fucking hell, really? Bloody hell. He didn't, and even me, when I've gone in interviews before, listen, I, he don't want me to give one excuse. He shook his hand, so much so that he actually got stick for shaking Marie's hand in a ring. Oh, he didn't look bothered. He didn't look bothered. He was fucking devastated. But as a man, you just brush yourself down, you hold your hands up. This goes back to the Jarrell Miller thing. The only way you can learn from a defeat is if you accept a defeat, right? So Wilder, whilst I don't think can win a rematch anyway, has no chance in a rematch. Because he thinks the only way that he lost was because of Tyson Fury's floppy glove and a dent in the head or something like that. And a heavy costume. You have to turn around and go, do you know what? When it come down to it, I wasn't good enough. I was beaten by the better man. And that goes for all walks of life. Business, sport, boxing, everything. If you don't get to where you want, if you fail, it's because you weren't good enough. So you dust yourself down again, and if you want it, you go again. And you get it right, you adapt, you learn, you accept defeat, and you let that acceptance and that defeat build you and grow you into being a better individual, being smarter, being a better athlete, all these things. But until you accept that, you're always gonna have a chip. You can imagine the camp, yeah, you never lost Deontay. You know, it was the costume, you know, he's warming up. It was only the costume last time. You know, it was the hammer, it was the hammer in his glove. It was the floppy glove, Deontay, you never lost, you the man. It's like, don't be, de don't be deluded. Just turn around and say, you weren't good enough. Evolve and improve. Thank you. Um, the new proposed date for Wild Fury 3 is on the 19th of December, I believe. Well, I mean, if, if we're to take that that's the date it's going to go ahead, mm -hmm. so does that kind of affect any dates potentially for Fury and Joshua next year if everything is to go to plan? Makes sense. Uh, what was the question again? The fight they've announced. A proposed date December for... December 19, yeah. December 19. No, I think the bigger issue is for Dillian White. You know, he's mandatory. He's due for the end of February. Josh is going to fight in November. So he's not going to fight till next May, June, anyway. So, you know, the, the interesting thing now is the mandatories particularly. Obviously, Usyk is going to fight Chisora probably in October. And White's going to fight in August. And then he's... The, 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 once... Dillian White beats Alexander Povetkin, that piles even more pressure on the WBC, and then everyone's going to get the momentum and go, call it, call it now. And then we'll, we'll get to see. Um, what was I going to ask? 
Fancy long blank. Run out of questions, didn't you? No, I haven't run out of questions. It's just an absolutely long blank. Um, I hope it doesn't rain on fight camp for you, Eddie. I really don't. Well, mate, so do I. So do I, mate. That's it. You've announced your first US show. Yes. Uh, in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Tulsa, Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Yes. Open air. Yeah. On the streets of Tulsa. No yeah. fans. No fans. Got no fans. Um, yeah. I wanted to do something different. I've seen the images which we'll share this week. Look, amazing. Um, went to a state, had a couple of comments online saying about cases and you know, we've been following the states, we've been following the cities and we've tried to find somewhere we think will be um, as less... Uh, not even risky as as ta you know as as tasking as possible, and we're comfortable with the decision. We'll keep an eye on it. We'll keep on going. Julio Cesar Martinez will fight his mandatory challenger McWilliams Arroyo. For me, you know, I love Julio Cesar Martinez because I phoned him up and I said, "Right, we're trying to get him to fight Mithalani for a unification. Will you fight Mithalani? Yes." Mithalani said, "I'm not ready till later in the year." Spoke to Delakian, a tough Ukrainian kid. Will you fight Dakar Delakian? Yes. Okay. He's not ready either. Will you fight your number one contender? Yes. You've got to love them geezers. So he's out. Brilliant women's fight. Cecilia Brackhouse against McCaskill. Undisputed championship. Shakram Giasov. The pro debut of Mark Castro. Raymond Ford. And Nikita Ababi. So that is on the... August the 15th. And your show that weekend is on the 14th. 14, yeah. So what, what are you going to do exactly? I don't know. I think it will be myself or Frank will have to go out for that fight. Miss the 14th, probably. And then fly back after. Okay. Um, Edward, can you kind of just go over your comments you made about a potential or possible design pay-per-view mm -hmm. that you did to, was it The Athletic? Yeah, they said, do you think the zone will, will start doing pay-per-view boxing? I said... What I said was, I, said, I wouldn't like pay per view to zone to become a pay per view platform because that's not the ethos behind the business model. The business model is giving people value for money by a subscription rather than obscene one off payments. What I said was, I think it would be interesting for them to have the capacity to do it in isolated circumstances where it would help them make a fight, but also more importantly, and I, you know, I'm thinking of this more with my. AJ Fury hat on. You know, you've got AJ with the zone, Fury with ESPN. If you're running a pay-per-view, and this is another conversation for the UK as well, do you share a pay-per-view? What you can't do is ESPN do the pay-per-view at $70 and the zone say it's $19.99 a month, or for $90 you can have the whole year. Mm. So you would have to create a like-for-like -like platform, like-for-like -like service where you would universally offer the product to different platforms, as is happening at the moment, actually, you know, ESPN, Fox, other cable platforms as well. And that's what you do with ESPN Design. And I, I think without that capability, it would be very difficult for them to air that fight. So pay-per-view isn't necessarily dead. I, d I actually didn't say pay-per-view was dead. Um, that has been the comment of other promoters as, as well in the States. What I said was, that the price, I actually, no, I will go to say this, I think the price point for pay-per-view is dead. I do. You know, I think where pay-per-view can be very useful is to make big fights. You know, and, but the situation is, is you know, like as I said, the mindset and the strategy for design, but don't forget that and they've done it. You know, they did Canelo Alvarez against Danny Jacobs, Canelo Alvarez against Kovalev, Joshua against Ruiz, one and two. You know, the KSI Logan Paul fight, they've done a number of big events that would have been pay per view on or one off payments on other platforms, and it's worked. You know, and I think it's got the it's it's got the loyalty from the fans to say we like this model, we support this model. So I think that should continue and it will continue as well. But I do think that that technical capacity will help in um, you know, potentially stare at staging or sharing um, that fun.
that the Lambda class? No, it wasn't. That was an email to Lou de Bella, actually. Oh. Hmm. Is it done? Who knows? Who knows? Tune in next week to find out. Edward, just to uh, find it, going back to Usek and Usek. Usek. Sorry. Usyk. I mean Alexander Usyk. Usyk. Cool. Yeah. Is it done? Yeah. So reply to that, I've written that. Usyk and Chisora, uh, venue-wise for that, what are you looking at at the moment? We are hopeful that by, even by September, we will be able to have a small amount of people in arenas. So I'll have something quirky up my sleeve for that, which I'm working on at the moment. I won't share with you at the moment, but we're probably a couple of weeks away from trying to implement. And we also have... Um, I go away next week somewhere to try and pull off something quite audacious internationally. Well, fight or signing? Fight. And I will report back in due course. Can I come with you? No. Oh. Document Are you now. getting your haircut? Yeah. When? Uh, nine o'clock. Tomorrow? Saturday. Okay. Um, you getting your haircut? Yeah, nine o'clock. Okay. Yeah. The mullet's out of control. It's longer at the back than it is at the front. Wait till it's done. Mm. Absolutely. Are you going out on the 4th of July, Edward? No. I, I actually, yesterday, I stopped at a service station to get a Starbucks. And it was the first time I've really gone in anywhere to get a coffee or get food or I popped to M&S a couple of times. But do you know what I mean? And oh, it's horrible, isn't it? I mean, stand there. Christ. All right, you forward. All right, well done. Back on that stuff. You know, people swerving out the way. You know, hopefully, hopefully we're on the verge of coming out, coming through. Let's say happy birthday to Carl Froch for tomorrow. Is it? Happy birthday to Cobra. Froch's Good. birthday tomorrow. Yep. Make sure you uh, go on, Carl. How and old also, is and also see How old is Froch? Ooh. Have a look. Forty. Forty. What? I'm gonna go. Forty-one. I'm gonna go forty-two. Two. Two. Forty-two. Thing is, right? Can I ask you a question? It's also Celine Dion's birthday tomorrow as well. <laughs> um. Do you, Carl Froch? Forty-two. Is forty-three tomorrow? Forty-three. Okay. Do you see Carl Froch as older than me? Like. Could, do you ever find that you look at someone who you're kind of like the same age as and think they're about 15 years older than me? Yeah, like, is that because you see yourself? You don't, how old are you? I'm 39 tomorrow. Okay, it's your birthday tomorrow. Yeah, that's happy birthday, mate. Oh, that's, that's what you were trying to get to, so everyone knew. Yeah? <laughs> I was I wondering why you knew well, Celine Dion. Like, how did you think I knew yeah, Celine Dion? No, I, I was just wasn't really even concentrating because you've been here too long now, and um, with. Do you get what I mean by that? Yeah, because I look so at you. So I look at Carl, like, I've always felt like Carl was my boss, right? So I always look at Carl as this legend and like this, like, he's much older than me, because look at what he's achieved. And actually, he's only, he, he's uh, two years older. Two years older. Hmm. Yeah. Like, Cause do I you look, see I yourself? You, I look at you, and on it, like, I think like you're the adult. Do you? Yeah. Do you see me as a 41 year old? Honestly? No, like you're like 29 tops, mate. That's exactly what I was thinking, mate. Thank you. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. No, I agree. Like, for example, let's think of someone else. I mean, Celine Dion, right? She's got to be 20 years older than me, at least. How old is she? She's not 60, is she? Well, oh, I know. I see her because I, 15, yeah, so. but I see myself as I see myself as like early thirties. That's what I see myself as. All right. Uh, so Celine Dion. You're about ten years older than Tyson Fury as well. Yeah. Well, that's another thing. Do and, you? And, and, and but a serious the, question. White as well. Do you see me as ten years older than Tyson? Yeah, I am ten years. Old. Do you see me as ten years older than Tyson Fury? Honestly, probably not. I see myself as the same age as Tyson Fury. Mm. Maybe he's forty-one. Right, Celine Dion. She is. Hold on, hold on. What? You're a tit. Her birthday's on the thirtieth of March. 
Really? Yeah. Are you sure? Yes, yes. All these years, I thought so, I shared the birthday. Mate, every tweet you send her. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Happy birthday, Celine. <laughs> Have a good one. Is yeah, it really? Are you yeah. messing about? Have a Millie's cookie. Oh, no. Do you know who so, it was? It was Brett the Hitman Hart. You did. Brett the right. Hitman Hart. Let okay. me just check. So, Celine Dion is 52. Okay. Yeah, look. Ed, Ed. Okay, how old do you think look. Brett the Hitman Hart is? Don't look at that. I know. Late 50s. I didn't. I genuinely didn't. Out. Oh. Late 50s. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's 63. Yeah. Fascinating. How old you are, mate? 72. Same kind of thing with him. I don't see him as 72, no. really. You and him looking mm. round about the same. Yeah, banter. Yeah. <laughs> right, Edward. Yes. I mean, Thanks for coming in. I know you want to go. Off. I know you want to go. Uh, just end it on, like always, so just end it on a nice positive message, Ed, for the fans. Um, there's nothing that, that you know, that I thought was interesting. You know the one I posted last night that you posted, Life Lessons of 2020? Mm -hmm. That was obviously pre-lockdown. But I think it's even more relevant now, to be honest with you. So, um, I'm back on it, mate. I'm back on it 100%. We're back rolling, and I advise you to do the same. Don't sleep on it, motherfuckers. Okay. Anyhow, thank you very much to iPhone TV, and uh, hopefully we'll catch up with you soon. We will. Cheers, mate.